we can go ahead and get started. Okay. So, taking a look at our comp real quick, you know, uh, thinking of priority targets, uh, you know, on our team, right, one, two, three, um, who would be the top three priority targets for our team currently? Um, obviously, Ryan. Uh, and I would probably go with Zarya Sombra. I honestly don't think that we even ha like have a third good pirate target here because Lucio, Sombra, and Weedle really aren't fantastic nano targets. So Zarya, yeah, Zarya, if she's full, full uh, beam charge, and then uh, Reinhardt was really going to be consistent whenever. Okay, and then they're also on a dive, so we have to be just careful about our positioning when it comes to that. You're going to be okay. This is another scrim, by the way. This is right. This is scrim, or yeah, this is, this is a scrim. All right. Nice job. Okay, so whenever we're up against a dive, so this is why taking a look at team compositions, first thing we do, um, is always going to be really, really good for us, is because it allows us to change how we're playing based off of the different team comps that we're working with and that the enemy team is. So, um, our comp is a brawl comp, the enemy team is on a dive comp. So, uh, that means that we're going to want to stick with our team a lot more when we know they're on dive, right? That way... We can get healed by Lucio. That way, the the tanks can keep the the enemy divers off of us, and we can be able to support them a little bit. Here, we kind of separate ourselves from our team, right? Look how far away we're standing from them, right? And then this means that when we do get dove by Genji, for example, we, it, we just become a very easy target. So, um, when we're on this dot, like when you're up against a dive, we don't really need to worry uh, too much about being out in the open, as long as we're with our team. So just make sure that we're staying with our team or are like you know sticking like right next to a Reinhardt more often when we know that they're on the dive. I'm not ready to hang it up. Objective I have lost. Stop the payload. Yeah, very nice. Good ability usage. Okay, again, we're kind of isolating ourselves from our team, right? That now Summer does get the hack off on him, so we're safe. But uh, if Summer had not been there, then now we're in a really bad position because we're separating ourselves and it makes it super easy for Doomfist to dive us. And then on top of that, look at where we are in comparison to tanks, right? And then now teammates end up dying. So, um. Big, big, big thing when we're on, when the enemy team is on dive, make sure that we can see our team and that we're in line of sight of our team, one, right, so we can actually heal them, and two, we pretty much want to be inside of them so that we're not getting dove super easily, because the further back we play, the easier it is to isolate us once they dive us. Dead eyes ready. Take your medicine. Easy. Meet your strike. Get to you. Nice. Gonna make you feel better. You're going to be okay. Okay, so, um, we have a McCree now, I didn't even realize this, but this means that McCree is now going to be a really, really great uh, nano target for 
uh, when while he has his ultimate, especially that we since we are up against a dive. So um, this maybe isn't as good against a spam or a brawl, but because they're on dive and they're all going to be spread out, and a lot of times they don't have many shields, um, high noon is going to be super effective against the dive, and getting that nano on there just going to mean it, it charges faster, gives them less time to try to get away from it. Okay, we we have been holding on to nano for a little while here, so um, want to make sure that we're using it more often and we're not holding on to it for forever. So I believe last time we went over old tracking, right? But I think your you have another your other teammate that does it. Yeah, our Lucio player. Okay. So have you been working on that maybe like outside of team play or have has that just kind of been something that you haven't really been focusing on too much? Um, I haven't played a lot of solo queue this week, but oh. um I I am thinking about it more in game. Mm. Alright, well then we'll just I guess review this once in a while here, especially when there's a bunch of ults on the board. So we take a look at ults, fights done. Um so we're thinking to ourselves, okay, they have played, uh so we can probably beat for that. Right, simple counter. Um, they have beat, they have coal, they have primal. So, uh, we can probably look to hack or, and or sleep the primal monkey. Um, we can beat for the blade. So we have some pretty good counters to what they have. If they beat, we can EMP it. Uh, so pretty much we have a lot of good counters to all of their different ultimates. Uh, and we just have to watch out, like, if, if we end up wasting any of those, like, if we beat at a wrong time, if we EMP to, like, and then they come in and beat afterwards, then we'll, that, that's a situation where ult management would have been super helpful. Okay, very nice. Okay, so they have swapped up their comp very slightly. Uh, they're now on the Mora, they're on Kree, and then they're on a Sigma. So, and also, uh, no, they've had Genji. So that means that they're now only on like a half dive here. So th we don't necessarily need to be as careful about sticking with our team as now they only potentially really have two people diving us rather than, you know, everybody on their side diving us. But we still probably want to play a little bit closer to them because since they do have those characters that can come on us in the back line. Right. Yeah, very, very good sleep mechanics. Nice sleeps that we were landing. Make sure in line of sight of our team again. All right. We've also held on to Nano for a little while here. Um, make sure that we're working Nano into uh, these calm, like these fights, right? Because we can be winning these fights maybe a little bit more securely and just be ha we probably could have had two nano boosts by this time holding it for three four fights is really probably never going to be a, a good play when it comes to ultimates which at this point i think this is the third fight that we've had it Oh, make sure that we're paying attention to what our team's doing right even if we're if, if he should be saying something right this is 100% something that Reinhardt should be calling out in chat. But even if he's not calling this out in chat, we should be paying attention to where he's at. Um, I'm thinking, okay, Reinhardt's hiding behind them. He has shatter. Uh, he's looking for a back shatter, right? So we need to make, put ourselves like, so if we know he's going for back shatter, where's that, where's that fight going to happen? Uh, choke. Yep, right around here, right? So we need to make sure that we're putting ourselves right, right on the corner to where we can actually turn the corner, land a big fat anti-nade, actually have impact, so we back up here. Right? And then now we have to, by the time we get around the corner again, they're all up already. So that's a big, it's a very good opportunity where we could have probably landed a big anti-nade there. Right? Or maybe, a, you know, at least two two people on Reinhardt or something like that. And then we also pro pro probably could have maybe gotten off that nano boost right away rather than having it be delayed. Oh, 
Okay, so they still have Blade. We still have Beat. Um, we have an issue here, though, and that's that they also have a Sigma Flux. So that means that we're going to... Samba, I would think that the best way to go about this is to try to have Sombra hack Sigma out of his ultimate. Um, and then that way we can counter that ult. So um, you can try to, like you say, Sombra, like that's kind of your job here is try to stop Sigma Flux. Because what happens if Sigma Fluxes and we beat for it, then they have free blade. If we don't beat for it, then that's a free Sigma Flux. So we got to find a way, you know, to counter both of those and not just, uh, you know, try to go throughout the Flux without any other... Uh, I guess way, ways of countering it or surviving it. We can also tell Zarya to hold on to bubbles, right? For when they flux or blade, I think flux would probably be the better one. Say hold on to bubbles for flux. That's much better. <laughs> Is that it? Bad guys, heads up. I will keep you healed. Come on, no, Okay, so um, we end. They end up uh, using both at the same time. We have B for it. I th I think B comes out slightly late here. Okay, Genji gets one pick, but everyone else gets beated. Uh, what's Summer up to? Right, Summer's back here. Oh, he does get hacked, but I think it's right as we're hitting the ground. So he just needs to be, be both B and Summer hack. We're just slowly out of, you know, slightly slow. Let's see, what do we do with our abilities there, actually? I will keep you here. I did that thing that you told me not to do last time and, like, flick too hard to get to sleep. Yeah. Now, if that's on a now that if that's on a Genji, it depends on the situation, right? Uh, first off, he doesn't have any damage boost, so he's gonna take twice as long to kill you. So that means that you maybe have more time to land the sleep. If that's a Nano Blade coming at you, then you don't you kind of have to go for a flick because you don't have the time to be careful and line it up. But there's also the fact that you are about you have a beat right now, so. You probably weren't going to die even if Genji went on top of you. But he did get the, your McRae. So um, it, it's pr it probably could go either way. Um, so I think the sleep's fine there. With Genji's, it's a little more lenient. But let's say like it's a, a monkey primaling you. Monkey primaling you is not going to kill you in, in, less, in one second, right? The same way, but a Genji who's nanolated can. So with a monkey, we can take more time and wait and line it up. Um, with a Gen nanoblading Genji, we can't really do that. Uh, Nade wasted there. Pay attention to the fact that you have beat. Also, the wall's too far away from you. Again, I haven't really seen too many nades used for anti-purposes. Um, and we talked about that was one of the top two points that we had last time. Um, of making sure that we are looking for aggressive anti-nades. Because that's how we get carry value on Ana. Um, but it just doesn't seem like we've been going for that very frequently. Oh, very, very good. Okay, so that's exactly what I was hoping for there. Wait an extra second with the with the monkey, right? Just be careful about placing this. Just going a little bit fast, right? Just take the extra second to try to get it. Do land that sleep, line it up. That's a situation where the rush is not needed. Genji, yes, rush is needed. Prime link monkey, rush isn't probably, usually isn't going to be needed. Okay, very nice. Fantastic mechanics. No, no problem with mechanics at all. I think we've landed all, almost every sleep that hasn't been on Primeling Monkey or Genji. Alright, so we have another nano here. Uh, ult wise, they have absolutely nothing. We have one nano. Uh, probably gonna look to go on Ryan Hart, but or it yeah they swapped up they swapped off dive completely here. So that's something you should also be paying attention to. No longer dive. So we're probably gonna be doing a lot better if we're sitting at a range or on high ground or something like that now. Um, 
Now, we can probably nano Reinhardt into that. We can probably nano Zarya. Either or works. Good pre-aiming there. I like the high ground checks as well, watching the flank angles for the Reaper. That's good awareness. Okay. Make sure we're on the same page as our team and they're looking to get aggressive, right? Our team is very obviously trying to get aggressive here, so this is probably where, we're, where we should be looking to use Nano. We're very kind of delayed with getting this Nano off, which means that Ryan... Which means that we end up losing this fight before we use Nano, right? So, um, I don't know if we did talk about this last time, but ults get more value the earlier in the fight you use it. Um, just let me know if any of this is, you know, something that I've already said before. Um, you know, if you, we wait till mid-fight, then any ults that they use are going to get more value, um, be essentially because they start getting picks. The longer we're waiting, they get two picks, and now we've pretty much lost this fight, or we're at a significant disadvantage, and now Nano is not going to do nearly as much. So, we we want to use Nano at the beginning of fights. Um, especially if they have a ultimates, right? Because our ult will get picks, it'll get, get us, uh, That'll put us at an advantage, and then now all their ults that they're using after that are going to get less value because they have less follow-up. So we want to use ults at the beginning of fights, not after we're down two people. Uh, be a lot less hesitant with your ultimate. Look to use it a lot more often because we're, we are holding on to it a lot of the time. Okay, ults wise, they have a Sigma now, or Sigma Flux, High Noon, Beat. Um, if they're coordinated at all, they'd probably go for a Flux High Noon that we could probably beat for that since we're 5% off beat. Um, besides that, we have Nano Boost. Again, probably want to use that on Sorry, Reinhardt. Don't want to wait too long. It was Lucio not at beat yet. No, he is in B for some reason. All right. You're powered up. Get in there. Very nice with the shatter there. Um. Go. I'll keep you healed. You're powered up. Get in there. No, just watch your positioning, right? We just kind of step out in the open area. Watch your jump spamming as well. I don't know if we talked about this last time. Um, we, did we did not. Okay, so uh, jump spamming is when you hold down your, your jump button. And why this is bad is because especially the higher up ranks you go in your diamond. So you're, you're in and you're that means that you're probably going to see this more and more. Um, it makes it much, much easier to headshot you when you're jumping. So for, especially for hit scan characters, snipers. Uh, when you go up, you have to come down, so it's a predictable animation. So it becomes easier to headshot you while you're jumping. Now, of course, this isn't going to be something that you stop uh, you stop spam jumping and then now you're going to get to Masters. It's not really something like that, but it is going to help you with your consistency a little bit, uh, stop you from getting killed as easily. So just make sure that you're not holding down your space bar. Yeah, and then we also stray from cover a little bit there too. I am on fire. This is much better than command on the beach. Sixty seconds. I have your back. Enemy contact. Fire at will. It's just a scratch. You'll be fine. Die, die. <laughs> Very fantastic sleeps. Sleeps have been very on point so far. Get back in the fight. Same with just our regular mechanics. I'd probably say, uh, just so far after uh, off of this first 20 minutes of our session, it's looking like a lot of the same stuff as last time. Uh, making sure we're positioning to where we can see our team, make sure we're synced up with our team, and also look for anti-nades a little bit more often. 
right, so that we can get that carrying potential. Um, I don't know if ults was a big one we went over last time, but just make sure that you're looking to use your ults a little bit more often, more consistently, and use it early in the fight. That does seem to be another big major point here. Very fantastic shots. Did we talk about Ana's uh, nade tech of how to hit long distance nades? Yeah, we did. Yes, I tried it a couple times. I don't know if I did it in this game, but I have tried it a couple times. Yeah, so this is just a range where you can very easily do that. Um, and just like even like right here, right? Like no one on our team. Oh, wait, never mind. We don't have even have it in a second. So like here, once we get it back, right? Nobody on our team needs a heal, uh, you know, heal nade, right? So we can just. We see two tanks there behind point. We can line up ult charge right on top of the hog here, chuck in a nade, and then that way they're anti from pretty much across the map, right? Instead of in here, we just kind of line it up, just make it a little bit more inconsistent. Watch the shield. Ready for battle. Alright, you guys are waiting on something here. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're covered. Ready for battle. I'm sorry, they just took forever. Oh, you're good. Okay, so we're on a Widow Tracer. Neither of them are really great po uh, nano targets. Uh, Ryan and Zarya are pretty much are just the uh, ones we want to go for. Enemy team, they have a Doomfist, so we gotta watch out for the Doomfist. Uh, besides that, they're just on a full spam comp. So, I can't remember if we talked about this last time. Uh, how many nano targets would you say is, like, too few? Like, would you switch off Ana if you have, like, one tank you can nano? Um, I probably wouldn't say that they're... Yeah, like, uh, when it comes to nano targets, I probably wouldn't say, like, there's any... I, I wouldn't say there's too few usually, unless you have absolutely zero. Um, then I think even one is still fine because Reinhardt's a very like one good target is fine because usually you'll be able to get that target. The reason why you pick out multiple nano targets is for when Reinhardt's dead, when Reinhardt's not you know anywhere near the fight, when maybe you know there's another better situation. Zarya's half HP, right? You get a little bit more value out of the healing. Um, that's the reason why you pick out second and third is for those other situations where you're going to get more value on the second or third than the first. Um, but you can get away with just like, let's say you just had Reinhardt and nothing else. Then that's still fine. Usually though, you like, I, I probably say it's very rare that you don't have at least two, uh, there, cause usually they're like thing you're going to have somebody who pairs well with Ana. There's not many characters that don't pair well with Nano. Probably say about half the characters in the game do well with Nano. Yep, just watch the uh, you know, the no effort nade tosses, right? We don't we don't take time to line it up. We don't check to see where enemies are. We just kind of toss it in, right? So it's just a little off, right? We we toss it. Make sure you know paying attention to it more. Put more effort into it. Try don't try not to catch Doomfist while he's in the middle of an ability. You try to go uh, hit him essentially when at, he's at the end of an ability. So when he's at the height of his uppercut, when he is at the end of a punch or a slam, not when he's in the middle of going for one of those. Because here we attempt to go to sleep him when he's in the middle of slamming, right? Uppercut. And then we hit it while he's in the middle of slamming, and then that's just means we miss it. So you, we want to try to catch him at with the end of an ability. Again, this is where I just be looking to chuck in a nade. Good job, right? We get the purple in. No, oh, good awareness. But if you know that you have a Doomfist behind, though, you might want to maybe step towards your team a little bit. Okay, make sure we're not taking too much attention off of our front line, right? So instead of just sitting back here and constantly looking back, step closer to your team. Get up, get up, maybe like, 
behind cart here. You, use, you can use this as cover, right? We can glance back once in a while. We can listen, but we kind of take too much attention away from the front line, right? And then that means that our front line dies. Very nice sleep. That was just unfortunate. I missed my shot. Make sure that, again, we're not taking too much attention off the front line, right? Um, it, the thing is, like, we don't... Uh, 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 yeah, so, like, here, I'll try to explain this. So, Doom comes at us. We land it. It's fine. For some reason, Lucio runs away. He probably should have helped you clean this up real quick. Um, but either you need to be communicating. Tanks, slow down. Don't go in. Back up. We're on McCree, right? Uh, or we need to... Yeah, we I, we hit through his legs. That's unfortunate. It's in our eyes. Yeah, we, we just hate, the problem is we, we just spend so much time off of the front line and the front line doesn't get any less aggressive. So that's why we end up losing the fight. That's like a team coordination thing. So there either needs to be communication where we're saying we're on McCree, don't go in, right? Or we need to make sure that we're killing the McCree faster. Lights out. Get Very good. Make sure we're not holding on the nano boost. Okay, holding on the nano. We'll use it earlier in the fight. Okay, we have nade available. Uh, try not to dash on to point in the middle of people, right? This is something you do if they're on dive. One Doomfist maybe isn't enough to run to your team, um, especially when he's not, I guess, let's see. Here, he, he ults. Okay, so he ults. That's why we're running all around here. All right, so he lands up top. Okay, so he, he lands up top and does a 120 uh, slam there. Echo sh uh I think Where's Doom at? Okay, so Doom's behind you. Is is me Echo staying with you maybe because of Doom Fist? Yeah, I asked her to. Okay, watch teammates stepping in front of our nades. Pay attention to where your teammates are. Step to the side of them. Yeah, it's just seeming like a lot of the same stuff over and over again. We have fantastic sleeps, we have fantastic mechanics. I think awareness is very high, game sense is pretty good. Um, I think the big two things, um, or three things, would be uh, positioning to make sure that we're in line of sight of teammates and we're on the same page of, with them when, when it comes to aggression. Make sure we're looking for anti-nades more often. Uh, sorry, one second, people are... Talking them back on. Um, sorry. Second thing here is making sure we're using our nades more aggressively, and then third things. Uh, third thing is making sure that we're using our ults uh, more often and at the beginning of fights. Watching your back. Don't worry, my friend. I have your shield. Let's get back. 
Game. Ult. Enemy team has a McCree ult. Our team has Grav, High Noon, uh, Nano, and then Echo ult. Uh, we only need to win one single fight, so we should not hesitate to use all four of these at the exact same time uh, because we only need to win one fight, right? So we grab, we probably Nano High Noon unless we want to Nano Echo when she transforms into like Reinhardt or something like that. That's also very valid. Uh, either or works. But I probably, like, you know, Nano Echo Ryan's gonna be a better Nano target than a regular Ryan Hart. And Nano High Noon can also follow up very, very well with a grab. Make sure that you're communicating. Zarya, use grab as early as possible. I don't care if Zarya gets a six-man grab. As long as we're saying use grab as early as possible, that's going to, like, because grab is essentially why, why I say that is... Grab is what we should be using first to, here to initiate, right? We're not going to use Nano High Noon or Nano, uh, bat, like a Echo Ult, right? If we are, if they're not all grouped up in the grab, grab is what we want to be using first here. So if Zarya is holding on to this until the middle of the fight, then that means that they have the opportunity to just get flat out picks, and they have the ability to get uh, use the High Noon to get value. So Zarya just needs to open up this fight with a grab, even if they have shields, right? Nano High Noon's gonna break through that, or Nano Echo doesn't even care because she just swings through them. So we just need to try to get two or three people in that, and then we're golden. It's just a scratch. You'll be fine. Fire at will. You're powered up. Get in there. Okay. Two, right now we have two better targets than... Oh, now, because Echo is only at 90 to roll, probably go for the Nano High Noon. Uh, Nano High Noon is going to be a better target. I think we... Uh, do we accidentally hit the Zarya? I think we were aiming for the Reinhardt. Because it looks like we were trying to hit Reinhardt. He moved to the side and the Zarya jumped in front of it. Zarya is okay, but Nano High Noon is just going to be better when they're all grouped up and they can't run away. Right? If we if we Nano High Noon, like, right now on the on their whole team currently who gets away how do they get away right the only thing that yeah. stops that is the lamp and we just focus down lamp and we're good i guess i've never really thought about a uh, nano high noon how yeah. strong it is nano high noon is very strong as especially when they don't have any like when they can't run away because they're either not uh in a, what do you call no man's land did we discuss with no man's land this uh yes I yeah think i was so, in it a lot yep any long open space that where there's no cover right on payload maps that's just going to be most of the of the walkway or path here right all no man's land because there's no cover during this whole area if they're all down here no man's land where where's hans are going to go when we ult where's anna going to go when he high noons bap has immortality and that's pretty much it he's not next to cover unless he runs into us uh and then, you know, these guys are screwed too in the graph, right? The only one on their team who's behind cover, next to cover right now, is the McCree. So, a Nano High Noon here acquires targets faster, gives McCree a higher chance of survival while he's High Nooning, because he has more health, or he has more uh, damage resistance, right? So, Nano High Noon is actually pretty nuts in the right scenarios, especially when, like, we have a, if we combo that with a grab. Okay, Reinhardt gets behind us, McCree Frags gets two picks, I imagine we lose this. Uh, for some reason, at what point in this, in this fight did we get those ultimates? Okay, so we have High Noon now, we have Echo, has her ult now, Reinhardt has his ult now. Okay, so essentially we also, our team holds on to too many ults. Uh, make sure you're communicating with your team. If we win this, this is last fight. Make sure we're using our ults because in this situation we could have very easily used three ult like these three ults that we have here and just completely body slam them with the, the f sh like sheer amount of ults that we have. All right, if we come into this fight, we just look at the 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 ult difference in the teams. They have one high noon. We have one, two, three, almost four ults. Right, so we have a three ult difference, and then we're gonna get shatter pretty fast here too. Whoops, I actually uh get backwards there so our team just essentially doesn't use ults here and then we end up losing the fight before we end up using ults so really really big thing tell your team to use ults if we're you know if you're coming into this last fight scenario here you don't need to save ults for anything because if you win you you 
you know, win the game. Okay, ults, they have Hanzo ult, they have Bap, they're gonna have Shatter, and then they're halfway to two other ults there. So, th three ults-ish, we still have three ults, almost four ults, so we should still have the ult advantage here. Um... Let's look at this. So, do we have to do anything to counter Dragon? Probably not. Um, as long as we're not, like, as long as it's not a fantastic placement, um, we don't really have anything to counter it anyways. Bap, don't really need to worry too much about it. Something to keep in mind, though, is if he uses it super early here, we can just back up around the corner. Um, Echo, Cree, Ryan. All right. I, I don't think there's too much on our team that we can combo beside from maybe like a Shatter High Noon. So, or even what we can also do is, is High Noon to break shields and then Shatter. But there's not too much to worry about ults with when it comes to ults here. Go. I okay, not really your fault. Nothing you could have done there. Step right up. Okay, which which direction is our team going here? Left. What happens if they go left and we're right here? We lose a little us. Yep. So probably want to be as slightly closer. That way we don't have to run forward for four seconds until we can see them, right? Because that's uh, us being this far backwards means that if they go left side or Echo or you know Lucio go left side, we don't have LOS on those two. And then at the same time, if any of these three go left, we're going to take a bunch of time to get to, to them. So what we can do is in this meantime, move up to like right here. And then now it's ha about half a second to where we're peeking that corner, not a whole three seconds, four seconds. Okay, make sure focusing on the front line slightly more. Uh, this... Nade on our Kree probably isn't necessary, right? Um, unless we think that like Hanzo's to, like right on top of him. Um, but he's not, like you know, Nade's only used for burst healing, so that does like one HP. Remember, we're we Nade. The only time we're using Nade on teammates really is when we ran out of ammo, or we or we're trying to. The big one is we're trying to burst heal people, right? Heal them because they're super low and about to die. So you just be careful of that because then we can't use it in a situation like this where we can get heal up burst heal our Reinhardt and get the enemy Reinhardt in that too. Okay, taking a little too much attention off of our tanks uh, in the front line. Kind of have a like uh, keep in mind that that essentially. When things are in more danger, they should be a higher priority for us when it comes to healing. So we got to pay attention to our front line because your Reinhardt is going to be the person in the most danger the majority of the time, right? Your main tank is going to be taking the most damage out of any character on your team the majority of the time. So therefore, if we need to make sure that we're paying attention to our front line. Yep, good job backing up with your team there. Good regroup. We got a pick, so we can probably go in fast, but we don't want to go in now. We, we want to make sure that we have our team back before we go in. We probably even wait until the Echo comes like halfway back and then go in, right? Because we'll be back before the soldier gets back. Okay, uh, ults. They have Visor. They almost have Dragon. That's pretty much it. We have Nano, we have Grav, we have Shatter, we almost have Noon. Again, hi Noon. Again, we have a significant ult advantage. We run in, we use ult, we press Q, we win. Uh, with Grav, or with our, yeah, so we make sure we grab first. With Nano, we can, since we don't have High Noon, probably the best one would just be Reinhardt, right? Because if we, because uh, he gets all that cleave damage into the Grav, which is going to be pretty nuts. Fine. 
good burst heal nade. That's a situation where nade, yes, is useful. And we got a pick. Zarya should be looking for a grab right about now. Here we get the nano off. Huge nade. Okay, good nade usage twice in a row. Good nano boost. We do land the shatter. Zarya is holding on the grab. Make sure you tell her, you know, don't hold on the grabs. Use it early in the fight. The grab should prefer preferably be used at the very beginning of the fight, not mid-fight. It's the oh ooh, whoops, I you know, I mean to do that. But grab is the ultimate that's gonna bait out pretty much every cooldown on their team. Get out, destroy all the shields, and then we have nano, high noon, and shatter after the grab's gone, right? And it can set up nano, it can set up high noon, and you know, that, so it just gets you a ton of value if you're using it earlier in the fight. Oh, I forgot. You're using the workshop code. Okay, so you... <laughs> so I, I, I apparently had to go an extra distance that I didn't think about there. Yeah. But, same... So maybe back here wasn't last fight, but it, especially like if the card's up here, then yes, that's one fight. So just be aware of where card is in comparison to how many ults we have, right? If we only need to win one fight, no reason to hold on to ults. Which is why we got stalled for like three minutes is because in that first fight, and I think in also another fight, we were just hesi really hesitant to use our ultimates. Alright, so uh, that's pretty much the end of this one. So do you have any other quads to go over? Uh, I don't believe so. Yeah. This was like the, the biggest game that we played this week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, honestly, I think uh, I think just looking back at coaching sessions, I think that the higher SR somebody is, usually we burn through these pretty fat, like uh, go through a lot more time because there's less mistakes. You know, if I'm talking with a silver player, uh, there's, you know, like five mistakes in every single frame. Uh, but <laughs> with you, it's more like one or two or maybe three a fight. So it's less to go over therefore we kind of go through this much faster i typically with somebody a, a lot lower sr than you maybe 10 minutes is uh sometimes we even get stuck at like you know like not even passing 10 minutes so uh if you don't have any other replays we have 15 or 16 minutes left so would you like to maybe go into like a live game like quick player comp or something like that um, I don't know my my uh, streaming capabilities. Uh, Discord. You can stream over Discord for very low uh, frame rate costs, and it's it doesn't require any setup. It's just like two seconds. Uh, I can attempt to, and you let me know if it's like unwatchable. All right. Sorry. Good. Uh, that's good. Uh, I was blowing my nose. Sorry about that. <laughs> Right, so I'm gonna stop streaming. Yeah, why don't why don't you just maybe hop into a death match while you're in queue or training range? So far, it looks fine. You can still see this. Yes. Yeah. So far, it's looking fine. Now traveling to Tetris. Yeah. Typically, it's only people with really crappy PCs that like Discord doesn't really take a bunch out of your PC to stream. So yeah. Major points are still just going to be those three things that I was talking about. And then maybe if I were to tack on a fourth one, that would just be communication with your team. Make sure that you're, you know, if you have the game sense uh, to pay attention to ults, if you have the game sense to talk about, you know, coordination in, in the middle of fights, then that's where you can start to call that out to your team and then maybe win more fights in more games because you're saying the right decisions, right? You're kind of guiding your team.
Okay, oh, taking a look at Tab, Nano High Noon, Nano Full Charge Zarya. Um, then besides that, not many Phantom. Maybe like Nano Ball would be like third best there. Uh, is Nano Ball like a bad thing? I've always thought that like Nano and a Ball into a slam was was an okay target. I think it's okay. I think it's better, especially if he ha if he's low HP, because it gives him a lot more survivability. But I don't think it's very. Ball's not a consistent damage character, uh, per se. Like, uh, it, he's a lot. If he can get shut down very easily when he's going in, uh, so he might not be able to stay in there for long. And then at the same time, you know, it, it requires a skill shot just to hit his his shots. So, not going to be fantastic, but I think it's pretty okay. Right, really focus on those those anti nades. Right, make sure we're looking for those. Oh, huge tire! With the how did he get tire fifty seconds in the game? I guess because he, he's cracked junky. I don't really know what's going on. Yep, from here, just keep in mind, right? We can just very easily go for those long distance nades just by chucking them in. That stops them. That prevents them from kind of walking through choke. Creates more space for our team. Okay, drop from high ground there, maybe not the best play, right? Because that's just putting ourselves in the open area where it's very easy to kill us. Other than that, again, make sure we're looking for the anti-nades anti because keep in mind as well, um, a good, uh, and again, this I feel like this might be something that I've said before, but if not, then I'll go ahead and say it. Um, I'll, sometimes a good offense can be a really good defense, right? Because if we anti-nade them, that p means that there's more pressure on them and they can't really peek you guys and get super aggressive. And then that means that you, in turn, take less damage, right? So a big anti means less damage for your teammates. So that you can think of it like that. And then now anti nate's like super powerful. And one, not allowing them to heal, but then also to space creator. Oh, stream just got super blurry. Make sure we're not holding on to nano boost. Right, you know, now that we've held on to it so long, that just means that they end up winning the fight because we ha we didn't use it, and then the game, right? So yeah, look to use that at the beginning of the fight, not after they've gotten three picks, and then you're gonna be much better off. I kind of want to see his tire. Over the roofs, yeah, baby. Oh. He is just cracked. All right. Do you want one more game? Yeah, we have 10 minutes. We can probably fit one in. If that one goes ju just as fast as that last game, we might be able to fit two in. Did the uh, the screen get any better? Yes, it fixed itself. Keep in mind that your nade can be a pretty effective way to cancel our hack if you're just not hitting the shots, right? Because it's hitting the shot to, to cancel the hack might be inconsistent just because it's, you know, shots. But lending that nade does have a quarter, or sorry, a quarter, a third of your health, cancels the hack, and then that allows you to maybe finish her off faster. Whereas if she gets off the hack, then now you can't even use nade.
Okay, so Nan Nano Blade. Did you Ryan Monkey? Mm -hmm. Yep. Probably win it. And then McCree's also going to be really good there, too. Uh, Ryan or, when you're thinking Ryan or Monkey, it's just whoever's going to be in the fight more, who's lower, who's brawling. If Monkey's inside all of them and Reinhardt's not, then Monkey. If Ryan's inside of all of them and Monkey's not, then go for the Reinhardt. Okay, good awareness, good mechanics. Remember, the biggest impact that we have at cracking this choke is just landing a six man anti nade, right? Just be careful because they do have a diva. Yep. Oh, unfortunate. So, positioning here, what would you do? Um, as a team, probably like if you're communicating with their six-man team, probably best way to do would be go to go top left. Now, pretty much where you're at is fine. Maybe you can go up to the next doorway too. That might put you in a little bit better position to land the nade because now you're a little bit closer, so they have less time to react for the for the DM, and it makes it so that it's easier to land. Okay, now we do have the nano, so we should be pressing tab frequently here, pre seeing what Genji's at. Oh, hello, hello. Uh, did my internet go out? Or did his? Hello. Hello. I uh, did you DC? I think I did. Okay. All right, that was uh, a little strange. I was wondering if that was me or you who disconnected. Okay, is your your game's just kind of loading? Okay, you're coming back in. Okay. Yep. Tab. Genji has blade. If he's not using it and it's nearing the beginning of the fight, just pop plop it on him. Yeah, he's, he's pressing he has it, so that means he's pretty close to, to be re being ready. So as soon as he looks like he's wanting to go in, you, you go for it. Very good. Ooh, nice shot. Right, okay, good good watching him, right, and keeping a crosser on top of him when you know he was looking for it. Just, I'd probably say the biggest thing in this game is just, you, you probably get a little bit more, crack through those chokes and get a little bit more impact if you're just looking for those nades more often. So, try to make sure you're getting around shields with it, try to get find a way to get around D.Va, uh, you know, and then that way you can actually get those anti nades online. Because right now, instead of it happening like 50% of the time, it's more like you get an anti nade like one in, or it's like maybe like 20% of the time that we're actually landing antis. Watch your health. Make sure you're requesting healing or you're nading. Okay, 
Bamber just taking about a second or a half a second to line that up with a scope in just makes it more accurate. Okay, right now, yeah, stick on car, just make sure you're not staying on car for too long once we get closer here. Probably just want to hang back, that way we're not making it super easy for tanks to get on us. Good nid, right? Two, two purples, one heal. Always good. Okay, another fantastic need, right? Now we're getting a little bit more aggressive with those things. You can really see the value that we're getting out of them. <laughs> All right now we can maybe be looking to reposition it onto like their high grounds, for example. All right, that way we can maybe get nades on them from above. We can support our DPS from up there. Nope, Mercy doesn't want to go for that res apparently. Good nade. I think. Couldn't see if it was purple or not, but I think we got it. Okay. I, I had no idea where to go there. Mm, yeah, probably just got a, ourselves a little bit too much in the en enemy territory. Um, make sure you're sticking back a little bit more towards that left side corner um, where your junk rat was there at the end. Okay, looks like he might get this. I think he's popping. Good anti. Hey, okay, well, got it, and that's perfect because we just ran out of time for the session. So, um, I'm gonna stop.